as we get started. If you have um, orange paint and green paint, you can just go ahead and squirt some of that on your palette. But if you have yellow and red, we are going to mix those colors together to make an orange, okay? So I'm putting on about a, oh, I guess about a dime size squirt of red paint. And I'm going to put about a quarter size drop of yellow paint, okay? So now I also have what's called my round brush, okay? So I have this brush that's kind of shaped with a round fashion, okay? And I'm gonna dip it in some water just to get the bristles wet, okay? And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a little bit of this red and I'm gonna push it towards my yellow. And then I'm gonna swirl those two colors together till I get a nice orange that I like. Okay, don't worry, your orange may be different from mine, but that doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. There's, we're gonna have some different colors out there and that's totally fine. Okay, so you just wanna swirl fairly good amount of your paint colors together. All right. And then once I have that color together, I am going to take my brush with my orange paint and I'm gonna come to the center of this canvas and I'm going to kind of make an oval shape. That's where we're gonna start. Just an oval shape. Okay, and then you can paint in the shape. Okay. So I promise you we're gonna turn this into a beard and you're probably wondering how we're gonna do that. But now that we've got our shape, we're gonna take some more of that orange color and I'm gonna come off the side and I'm just gonna create it's just a little line that's going to represent his parts of his beard coming off the side. Okay? And you can do as many of these as you want. I think I'm going to put one maybe just a hair bit higher here. Okay, so these are his little bits of his beard peeking out. do one more like right down here in the middle down here at the base and I'm just gonna have it hang out right there so the next part we're gonna start talking about is his nose okay and so how I'm going to make the color of his nose is I'm gonna grab some of this orange and a little bit of red. 
and I'm gonna mix those two colors together to make it kind of a darker orange. Okay. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it. So I'm just gonna take my white paint here. I'll add just another, again, about a dime size of the white paint to my palette. So I have my white here with this kind of dark orange color and then I'm just going to add the white so I get a color that I like for his nose. It's kind of this pinkish peachy color. And when you're ready, you've got your color going. Yeah, if you guys, if I'm going too fast, let me know, okay? So you guys can let me know if I need to slow down, okay? But I've got this pink color, and I'm gonna come to the top of his beard right here, okay? And I'm gonna draw a circle for his nose. Now, one thing about your um, paint that we're using today is when we're painting one color on top of another, you might find that it blends together a little bit. And that's okay, because what we can do is, is when, we, um, when this gets a little bit more dry, we can go back over this and it'll get painted darker, okay? Well, now what we're gonna get ready to do is we're gonna make the green color for his hat and his shoes. So I have some yellow on my palette already, and I have my blue color. So again, I'm going to drop about a quarter size drop of blue paint on there. And I'm gonna rinse that round brush I've been using. So give your brush a good rinse so that we get that um, pinkish uh, color out of the brush. And we're going to make kind of a dark green. So what that means is I'm gonna have a little bit more blue than yellow in my color this time. So when I swirl these two together, I want to have more blue in it, just a little bit of yellow. Now you can have your hat be shaped any way you want. So you kind of want to start thinking about 
you know, if you want it to go straight up or if you want it to be curved. But I'm going to do my curved hat, okay? And how I'm going to do that is I've rinsed my brush and I'm going to go straight into the green, just kind of rolling my brush back and forth there. And the, the bottom portion of the hat kind of literally goes a little bit over the top of the beard and the nose. So I'm gonna come like right down here to this side. I'm gonna overlap the beard and the nose just a tiny bit. And I'm gonna pull that green color. To the other side. And you overlap your colors like that, that helps that hat look like it's sitting right down on top of his head and over his eyes, okay? And then this hat has a curved edge, comes up, kind of turns up a little bit, and then bends over. <laughs> this little hat this time is going to be kind of squished, but that's okay. Okay, so this is where my, and then I'm going to curve back down again. and then meet the other side there. Kind of looks a little bit like a pumpkin with a nose right now. Okay, so now once I have the shape of my hat, I'm gonna go ahead and paint that in. All right. So I've got the, the hat in place. We can't forget his shoes. So he has green little slippers on the bottom. So I'm just going to come in here and again, I'm going to make a very similar shape to like the circle I did for his nose. I'm gonna do for the feet as well. And these are just little circles, okay? Little. I think for mine on this side, I'm going to have his little beard kind of be in front of this, this shoe. So. But you, if you have space in there, you can certainly do a full circle, okay?
All right. So we've got our lucky gnome here and basics painted in. But what I'm going to do is I need to have the background be dry before I, I go any further. Okay. So I'm just going to take a, a paper plate that I have left over, or you can use a piece of paper or a towel. And I'm going to fan my painting just for a couple minutes here so we can get it, hopefully get that background to dry. Now, the other thing to be thinking about is, is you don't have to have your dots on the hat and the shoes be the same color as mine. I'm gonna do some light green or yellow green ones, but you can do different colors if you want. So this is where you can kind of change it up and make it your own and have some fun with it. If you want to stop fanning and just take a quick look and if there's anything um, on the beard or the nose that you want to uh, touch up, you can certainly do that. So I do have a couple of spots on the nose that I want to kind of fix because I can see a little bit of the background showing through. So I'm just going to come in here. And then I can see in my beard, there's just a couple of little places where it's kind of transparent. It's letting, letting that canvas kind of show through. I'm just gonna come in and put a little, little more paint in there, second layer. just in those spots that you think you need it. So I'm going to do the same thing for my hat. I can see that some of it's dry and I'm, I'm having a little bit of a transparency issue. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of my green. I've, I've rinsed my brush and then I'm just going to come back in here and try to fill any of those little areas that have some transparency happening. Sometimes when the paint is really wet, it just kind of wants to kind of just move around. So <laughs> it doesn't want to stick. So if that's the case, then we just need to let that area dry a little bit more.
So I can see my, my shoes are still a little wet and so I'm gonna take advantage of this moment and just kind of use my paper plates again to fan it a little bit. All right, so while we are letting this background dry, um, I'm going to um, start mixing my color for my polka dots, okay? So I'm gonna be putting dots um, on the hat and the shoes. And so I have some of this dark green still. And so I'm gonna mix in some more yellow. So I'm once again going back in here using my round brush. Now, anytime you start to mix a color, I always recommend rinsing your brush. Okay, so rinse it and then start with a fresh brush when you're mixing. And so I kind of have this kind of lime green, light green color. You can, of course, mix any color you would like. You could do straight yellow if you wanted. Now I'm once again just going to take a look at my background and see if I still have a little few spots that are kind of damp, wet. So again, I'm going to give it another second here. Try to fan it so that it can dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my dots and my, my full circle dots. So I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna put, make a circle and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, okay? So I have that first one and I'm gonna put another one down here closer to the nose. I will put one up here. You can put your dots anywhere you'd like. Okay, again, they don't have to be perfect. And then I am going to put a, another round one right on the end of the edge of the hat there, the tip of the hat. And then the rest of our circles are just little half circles, right? Because they're kind of folded uh, around the edge of the fabric. So I'm gonna come right here uh, to the side of his little hat here. I'm gonna do a slight, I'm gonna follow that curve right there. And then I'm going to make it round on top. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it on this side. So this one, I'm just going to bring a half circle and then follow that edge of the hat. We don't see those full circles because they're at a different angle. And there's one on this side too. So I'm just going to And then there's just a couple more up here on the top of the hat.
And then I don't, I don't want his little shoes or his little feet to be without their polka dots. So I'm just gonna put one on, or two on each of these little slippers. So I'm gonna do one here. It's gonna be like a half one. And then another half one at the top here. And I'll do the same over here on this guy. those things are drying and we've got those set up there is one little thing that we can do and that is he has a little shadow um, underneath his feet and his beard here right so it makes him look like he's sitting on the ground or he's standing on the ground and how I'm going to make a color for that is I'm going to use some white and I'm going to use some black and again I'm just going to put like a dime size Squirt of paint on my paper plate palette. I'm going to rinse out my round brush, okay, so it's nice and clean from the green that I've been using. And I'm gonna make a gray color by mixing some white with a small amount of black. That black color is very strong. So if when you add it, you just wanna go slow in slow, small amounts, so it doesn't overpower too quickly. So this part can be a little bit tricky, okay? So once I have the color mixed together, I am gonna rinse that brush one more time. And dry it just a little bit to get the excess paint or water off. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit on this brush okay and what I want to do is I want to come underneath the feet okay just a little bit I'm just kind of pulling a line of paint across there we go just underneath his little booty there Okay, but I have to come up into this little space between his foot and his beard for, for mine. If you don't have this part, you don't have to worry about it, but um, I am gonna come in here very carefully because I don't wanna cover up his shoe or the beard. And I'm just gonna very gently follow along that edge with my brush. And then I can color that space in right there. Okay. And then I do want to, here we 
go. Make sure I bring it out. There. Yeah, that looks good. And then of course you can bring it down a little ways if you want. Okay. So now he looks like he has a little shadow there. So he looks like he's actually standing and he's casting a shadow. If for some reason you accidentally painted over something you didn't want to, you can always go back in with a little bit of color that you need and fix it. I went over his shoe just a little bit there. Okay. So our job right now is to make sure that the center area of his beard is dry. And if it isn't, then we wanna fan it a little bit. So if you take your painting and you move it to the side so you can see it at an angle, do you see that sheen on mine? If you see the sheen, if it's shiny, it means it's still a little bit too wet. So that's where I'm gonna take my plate and I'm gonna do just a little bit more fanning in the center there. And the reason we're doing that is we need to start working on our pot of gold. All right, one more time. I've rinsed my brush. And now I'm gonna start planning where I'm gonna put his little pot of gold, okay? And the color I used for the pot is just pure black. So I have the black here, I'm just gonna dip my brush in. And I'm gonna come down from his nose at least, you know, this is probably about an inch and a half. So I've got my fingers, my thumb and my middle finger, you know, a good distance from each other. So that looks like a really good spot. So I'm gonna draw a horizontal line like that. And then I'm gonna draw a curved line starting from this edge, going around and coming up to that edge. And once I have my shape, I'm going to just paint it in. Okay. So once again, we have to kind of wait for this pot to dry before we paint his little hands on there. So um, I'm gonna do the first of two things. I'm gonna fan a little bit so we can get the drying process started. And then after that, I'm gonna go back and again, I'm gonna do any touch up. So 
I'm going to see where there's some areas where I need a little bit more paint or a little bit more color. If there's anything I want to fix, something maybe was a little crooked or something, this is the time to do that. But I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna start the fanning process for drying his little pot of gold. And when you're ready to give your hand a break from fanning, <laughs> Um, again, you can go back and kind of uh, work on putting a little more paint in here and there if you want to darken anything up. So I've rinsed out my round brush and I, I do have some of my dots that I want to just put a little bit more of the color in there. So it doesn't let any of the background show through. So while we're waiting for a still for some of this to dry, um, we can also do a little bit of a detail work. So um, I am going to um, switch from using my bigger round brush to using a slightly smaller one. You can use this, this bigger one. You just want to remember not to put too much pressure on it when you're using it for the detail, okay? So I'm going to get the bristles wet for this brush and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some white on this brush. Okay, so I'm just going to dip it and pull back, get a little bit of white on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the little white reflection on the top of his nose here. And that's just taking your small detail brush and gently, not a lot of pressure, but gently pull across and put on that little highlight across his nose there. There are two more of these little white highlight light, uh, lines, white lines, and they are on his shoes. So I am just going to do just what I did up on the nose. I'm gonna come here and I'm just going to make another little line across his shoe. So now we have definitely come to this part where we're going to put his hands on his uh, the um, pot of gold okay and I'm going to go back to my palette and I'm going to try to recreate my skin color which was some orange that we had earlier I put in a little bit more red so it was kind of on the red orange side and then I added some white so I really want to try to get as close as I can to that same color.
You may have some left over, so that's totally fine. There we go. Okay. But um, I'm gonna rinse my round brush out because I don't wanna use that big round brush for his hands. I wanna use that little detail brush that I used for the white lines. So I'm gonna go back to this, the little detail guy. I'm gonna put some paint on this brush. Okay. And you don't want it to be too thick. Okay, you just wanna have the bristles of the brush kind of covered. Now, when I do this, it was very similar to how I made my dots or my polka dots on the hat, okay? So, I'm gonna come on the side of the pot of gold here and I'm gonna take the end of this and I'm just gonna draw a line that follows that edge, okay? And all I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna bring a curved line that starts here and wraps around to that edge, that point, and I'll fill that in. And then, of course, I'm going to do it on this side as well. So I'm going to try to match this up. I'm going to draw a curved, slightly curved line there. I'm going to start on this point. Draw around to that point. So once you have your little hands on the pot, then you're gonna want to rinse your detail brush out because we're gonna use it again, but we're gonna use it to um, paint the gold onto our, into our pot, on the top of our pot there. And um, that's just using yellow paint. Okay, so take my little detail brush and I've cleaned it, rinsed it, and I just dipped it in some yellow paint. And what I did for this is I just made little, little kind of mushes like coins, like the shape of, so I came along And then you can stack them. So you start doing another line on top. And each time you come in one little section, you don't go all the way to the end.
And then our final little detail that we're going to put on is we do have one of those uh, white lines, again, one of those highlight lines right on our little pot here. So I'm just going to rinse my brush, pick up a little bit of white on it, and then I will put a little matching white line on the pot of gold. And there you have it, guys. You just painted a leprechaun gnome with his own little pot of gold. The International Art Museum of America, located at 1025 Market Street, sits at the heart of downtown San Francisco between 6th and 7th Streets. The aim of our nonprofit museum is to display artworks of disparate cultures to promote peace and harmony among peoples. Visitors will enter a garden with full rock formations, tropical flowers, live ferns, and a waterfall flowing into ponds. The gallery houses ink and wash Chinese paintings, abstract oil paintings, hyper-realistic ink paintings of animals, landscapes, and figures. Approximately 60% of the displays are paintings and sculptures by the contemporary artist H.H. Dorje Cheng Buddha III. The gallery also contains European oil paintings of landscape and portraits from 18th century, including works by the French realist Rosa Bonheur, the Norwegian impressionist Fritz Thalo, and the French fauvist Maurice de Blamini. Yamaha offers a peaceful environment for visitors to enjoy beautiful art. Admission is free for all of 2014. Here in the gift shop, we have a little something for everyone. Whether you're a tourist or a local, or shopping for yourself or for others, especially for children. We have many products based on Yamaha's hard work, as well as international and San Francisco themed items. We do our best to have a consistent flow of new and exciting products so our visitors can always find something special to take home every time they visit Yama.